Hey everyone, I'm back with another horrible YouTube thumbnail. Um, they seem to be working, so I, I'm sorry. I have to keep doing them. Uh, we're talking about JavaScript getters and setters, a lovely piece of syntax in JavaScript. Uh, let's go ahead and get started. So I've got a very simple class here. This is kind of the classic example used to show getters and setters. It's a person class. Each person has a first name and a last name property. And then I have a full name method because I commonly want the full name, which is just first with a space and then last. Um, this works just fine, right? I have my actor that I've established down here, new person, first name is Brendan, last name is Fraser. Uh, I can access, let's just do a console.log actor.fullname. Of course, I call it with parentheses. It is a method and we see Brendan space Fraser printed out. But this method here is basically acting as it's a computed property. It's taking two pieces of information, dynamic values, smushing them together with a space. It might be nice if I could call it as a property, if it looked like a property, but it was really a method. That is what a getter allows us to do. Using the get keyword, we put that in front of some method name. This will establish a property on our person instances called full name. And when we access that property, it will execute this method. So we get the functionality of a method with the appearance of a property. If I save this right now, I'm going to get an error because now JavaScript says full name is not a function. I'm calling it like it is calling it like it is. Yeah. I always call it like it is. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of those parentheses actor dot full name looks like a property behind the scenes. It's calling this method and we see Brendan space Frazier. If I were to change actor dot, uh, first to be something else like my name. Now we get Colt space Frazier when we print out actor dot full name. So this is dynamic, right? It is a computed property that looks like a property, but it's calling this method whenever we access this full name property, don't use parentheses. That's the whole idea. So we can also use the set keyword, not get, but set to define a setter method. Now this is something that will look like a property. It will be a property that executes a setter method when we access that property and set it to a new value. So in other words, I could do something like this actor dot full name equals, and then let's pick some actor. Like, uh, I was going to say Timothy Chalamet, but I don't know how you spell his first name, Chalamet last name. Let's just say that's it. I'm sorry. I think there's an accent in there somewhere, but let's say that is uh, how you spell his name. What I want this to do is set first name to be Timothy and last name to be Chalamet. So basically I can set up something that will look like a property. It will behave like a property. When I call it, I don't use parentheses. I can set it equal to something, but then behind the scenes, it will call some function that will do some fancy logic to update first and last. So this isn't necessarily something you need to do in this situation. Um, because normally you probably would just change first name and last name individually, but just for the sake of showing you how this works, we'll provide some argument in here or some parameter rather. We'll just call this new name. New name will be set to Timothy Chalamet, or it will be set to whatever I provide on the right hand side of the equal sign. So then in here, I could start with just some super simple logic that I don't know. You tried to change name, change full name. And I'll console.log new name. So now whenever I try and set full name, you'll see that this function is called, it says you tried to change full name. And then it also prints out the value of new name. So we have access to new name in here and I can do some fancy logic. It's not very fancy, but uh, if I wanted to get the first name, I would split on the space, right? New name dot splits on a space. And then that will return to me an array. If I just print that out for you, it has two elements. So then I'll probably just destructure. Let's just do something like const first and last equals that. And then I'll just set this dot first equals first, this dot last equals last. And now I have updated the actual instance of person. So if I were to look at this dot first and this dot last after the fact, let's just go over here. Actor dot first is now Timothy, hopefully spelled correctly. Although I don't know actor dot last is Chalamet. If I were to update, let's say actor 
dot full name is now actually equal to uh i don't know how about uh i have no idea how you say her name source source ronin great actress in lots of good movies but uh another one that i'm not sure if i'm spelling correctly or even saying correctly but it works if we look at actor dot first now it's set to shirt source <laughs> and I am butchering that, and actor.last is Ronin. Now, this is maybe overkill for what we need here. Again, there's no problem with just setting first and last separately. But what is nice is that I could add in some logic, some error checking, some validations to make sure that uh, you're not setting first and last name to be empty, for example. So by using a setter, I can insert some additional logic in the same way that if I just defined a method called full name, I could write whatever logic I want in there. But again, this is behaving like it is not a method. It's behaving like it's a single little property, but it's calling a method behind the scenes. So I could add some logic in here that does something like if not new name, like if you don't provide one, we'll throw an error, throw boo, name cannot be blank. Just like that. And now if you try and set actor dot full name equal to an empty string, we get an error. So now the question is, well, my question at least is why or when should we use these? Should we use getters for everything that we ever define on a, an object or a class? And by the way, you can use these just on regular old, you know, object literals, it doesn't have to be a class. Um, but why or when should we use them? And the answer is you probably don't need to use them all the time. I wouldn't. Uh, in fact, one thing I haven't shown is that you cannot have a getter that has the same name as an existing property. So I couldn't set up a getter like get first, and then in here, console.log, ha ha ha, like that, because I'm gonna get an error. It says you cannot set property first, uh, blah, 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 blah. Basically, it's telling me first already exists on this object. We can't have a getter with the same name. But what I could use a getter for is if I have any logic I want to run every time you access a property. So maybe uh, I wanna do something like, I don't know, this dot count and have it start at zero. This is silly, but every time somebody accesses full name, I want to increment this dot count. I don't know why, it's stupid in this case, but maybe that's something I wanna do. Well now, every time I go to look at the full name, which looks like a property, oh my goodness, not like that. Every time I access it, let's do it twice. We look at count. That's been incremented four times because I accessed it two times earlier when I uh, ran this file. So that's something we can only do um, when we are using a getter. I mean, you could do it with a method, but uh, you couldn't do it with just a regular old property, right? We're inserting some logic every time you access dot full name. Another reason is for simplicity's sake. If you have some computed property that just looks it behaves like a property, you want it to look like a property, then use get. And just like with getters, by defining a setter, I can run some additional logic. Let's say there's some side effect or something I want to happen every time you set a property. So that's it for get and set. Just remember, you cannot use a name that is already existing as a property in an object as a getter or setter. You have to have unique names. You can have a getter and setter of the same name, that's really common, but I couldn't have get first if I already have this dot first as a property. Okay, thanks for watching everyone. If literally anybody made it to this point, I feel like most people watch two to three minutes and then just skip around. But if you're here, I hope you enjoyed it. Con uh, consider subscribing, liking, all that stuff. And uh, I'll be back next week with another video on something JavaScript-y, React-y, Node, TypeScript, something like that. All right. See you then.